Hello everyone and welcome to the Smith Center for tonight's matchup between St. Mary's Riken Knights and the Mount St. Joseph Gales. I'm Mason Billings, joined by my pal Alex Quaz. Alex, what are some keys to tonight's matchup? Yeah, I'm looking up for a lot from both teams as we wait to see if they're going to play the national anthem. Apparently not. Um, so for MSJ right now, I'm looking to see if they can keep the Knights in the half court and force some turnovers. A lot of at the time in the first and second quarters when they go on their runs, it's all about forcing turnovers, getting out, getting free layups. And they did that in their first seven games, they're seven and zero. And so I just wanna see if they can limit St. Mary's from running because they're one of the fastest teams they've played thus far. And then on the other hand, for the Knights, I'm really looking forward to see if they can keep up with MSJ's pace and adjust to that. So if it seems that MSJ's getting a little too fast, maybe put in a little press and slow them down. And we're off. And MSJ wins the tip-off. Number 12 is point guard Ryan Truitt for the Gales. Number one is power forward Tyon Farrell. Number 23 is small forward Joe Green. And number five is shooting guard Dion Wingfield. Wingfield with the wide open jumper, does not hit. Riken with the rebound. Last time these two met up was 2021 DMD Live. Gales yes. won by 40. Obviously, that is two years ago, so you really can't take that and into one, consideration, but yeah. And one thing about both of these schools is they're both Severian Brothers sponsored schools. You have to think St. Francis Xavier is up somewhere in heaven, tuned into the live right now. How do you, th well, what do you think about that, Quaz? Of course, in football, Gales were up 42 to nothing, going into the lightning delay, and then gave up 35 straight points, barely held on the win, 42 to 35 now into the basketball version. We'll see how this one goes. Yes, we'll have to see. St. Mary's Reagan gets the ball out of bounds. Yeah, one thing that surprised me about the Knights, they play in the WCAC, which is another very competitive league here in Maryland. They finished towards the bottom of that league, two and 13 in conference last year. But watching their film as they watched their scrimmage against Pilate last year. Oh. And it looks like there was an error with the shot clock. Refs talk it over. One key player missing for the Gales is uh, Yale commit Jordan Brathwaite. Uh, he, it looks like he is injured right now. He is on the bench right now, but he's one of the best players in the MIA. Big loss right now for the Gales. Hopefully they can get him back soon. Yeah, St. Mary's Reichen is pretty familiar with him as good counsel is also, for whom he transferred from is also in the WCAC. So, I mean, I guess good news for them that he's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he's been a big part of uh, this MSJ Gales team so far this season and one of the best players in the MIA. All right, the whole shot clock thing has been settled. Looks like it's gonna be reset to a full 30 for the Knights. All right, St. Mary's Reichen inbounds it, pulls the deep three. Oh, and swish, nothing but net. Beautiful shot. Sorry, I guess that was 3.0 seconds. St. Mary's Reichen is pressing to start off. Yeah, it looks like they're it's in like a 2-1-2 two, two zone press. Yeah, full court, 1-2-2 two, two to start, and then fall back to man. Ryan True with the ball, passes it to Farrell, finds Wingfield under the basket, makes the shot. One thing I, from a, that I saw from this Knights team, they're very disciplined defensively. Yeah. They're very good at communicating. They'll switch through screens, they'll go over, and they put a lot of pressure on the Gills. So I'll be interested to see how they adjust. Lottie has the ball. Number two crosses, kicks out for three, drives to the paint, no good. Wingfield with the rebound in the fast break. Behind his back, oh, a little scuffle, jump ball. Very positive sign from the Knights to start off. Two minutes into this one, they're already back. Wingfield looked like he had an open layup and against some of the teams the Gales played this year, they would have had an open layup. They Uh, from the Potomac, just to, uh, well, just to get beat easy, that's for sure. Oh, good move, spin move. On uh, Joe Green with the rebound. Passes it to Wingfield. Green to Holmes. Holmes, point move, good shot. Holmes is going straight to the point. Oh, and a sloppy play by the Knights. 
and it's Gale's ball. One thing Coach Klatchy loves is his players for his bigs to run straight to the basket and post. Holmes did that right there, recognized the mismatch. That's an easy layout for him. Yes. Holmes, a guy whose role has increased greatly this season. Now one of the major parts of the team. Truett inbounds to Green. Green with the ball. Goes to the paint, kicks out to Wingfield. Wingfield passes to Terrell, to Farrell, drives to the basket. Floater's no good, put back is no good as well. Oh, and one, that, sh that looked like an and one, but uh, Isaiah Carpenter with a nice layup. Yeah, it looks like the Knights just implementing this press just to slow the Gales down as I said at the start of the game. Yes, right now St. Mary's Raken looks strong against the Gales. Jan Wingfield with the ball, passes to Joe Green. Joe Green back to Wingfield. Green drives to the paint, dish to Holmes. Holmes trapped. Oh. And called for three seconds. You'll notice on that action, the Gales ran there. Noah Rogers did a great job cutting off the flare scheme for Wingfield on the opposite side. That's one of the main actions the Gales run. And looks like a great scouting job by the coaches. He yes. cut that off and forced Wingfield to cut to the basket. Yes. St. Mary's Reichen with the ball. Oh, shoots the three. No good from Robert Howard. Truett, I mean, Green with the ball. Burrell shoots the floor, and it's good. Oh, Knights lose the ball, but get it back. Knights passing it around right now. Passes inside. Oh, three ball. No good, again, from Howard. Green with the rebound, passes up to Farrell. Farrell drives to the paint, foul called. Knights might start throwing a double team at Farrell. They're yes. in transition, they had two guys helping right next to the basket. Yes, Farrell, Rhode Island commit, very talented. He's a guy that whenever you play MSJ, you gotta find a way to stop him. Yeah, he's their main scorer, and oh, first shot is good for Farrell. He does a great job dri driving to the basket, forcing up tough, shot, tough shots, and also putting them in. But he also does a great job kicking out to his shooters. He's got a lot of shooters around him: DJ Wingfield, Jordan Brackley when he's in. Ryan yes. Truett's got a pretty good jumper. He does a great job spraying to his teammates and getting finding them open. Yes. Pressure defense from Truett. Passes to Howard, out, drives, floater, air ball, no good. Green with the rebound, pushing up court, and settles it down. Oh, drives to the basket, and no foul is called. Again, you saw that Green pushing the ball, all five Knights defenders back. And again, almost forces a jump ball. Gales get it out of bounds, under the basket. Truett inbounds it to Wingfield, shoots, misses. And St. Mary's Reichen with the rebound, looking to push. 23 for three, no good. Ryan Truett with the ball, passes to Farrell. Farrell behind his back, nice move, but gets it stolen. Ooh. Looks like Pharrell called for the foul there. Like I said, Knights love to run. Saw that a lot in their scrimmages, and I'm sure they did a lot in the tournament they played in over the weekend. But so far, five minutes into this one, they're keeping up with the Gales. I didn't know if they could, but they're doing a great job thus far. And the Knights have a sub. Knights run their pistol action, which is a down screen, and then a ball screen for the person coming off. Knights pass up to the top of the key. Knights out for three. Air ball, no good. Oh, number seven with the rebound. 
11 again. Oh, and that's sent back by Pharrell. Oh, yam time. One on one. Lay. Oh, no good. Foul. And Pharrell will go to the line and shoot two. Pharrell is someone who gets sent to the line a lot in these games, and he gets a lot of points from the foul line. What do you think, Quaz? Yeah, it's so hard to guard him because he'll just force his way into the paint, force up a tough shot, and there's really nothing he can do because he pretty much plays into the contact. Mm. This is the first shot, and B.J. Ranson in for Ryan Truitt. B.J. is a guy, an offensive spark off the bench. What do you think about B.J.? Yeah, just finishing off Pharrell. When he gets to the paint, really the only thing he can do is take an offensive foul, but that's kind of hard when there's a 6-7 guy coming yes. down the lane. But uh -huh. also switching to BJ, guy who played JV last year, learned a lot, really good shooter, really yes. good playmaker. And you've seen his growth this year, just getting down the floor. Oh. And St. Mary's Reagan calls timeout. Apparently, yeah, I don't know. Miguel will stay on the floor and do not huddle up. Yeah, refs are talking to the scoring table. Oh. I don't know, BJ, you know, he's I mean, he's just a really good shooter and playmaker. That's really yeah, all I so can say. If he gets the he, ball wide open, then it, it's scary for the defense. It, it, he's a guy, senior year, could be the lead guy on this very talented MSJ team. Yeah, and he's a guy that, he's like the type of guard that Coach Clatchy loves. Coach Clatchy yes. loves guards that can shoot. He loves guards that can rebound, and he loves guards that can play defense. Mm -hmm. And BJ's, his defense has really improved. Last year, he was really only a guy that he could shoot. He played great offense, but defensively, you really couldn't trust him in the full court. And he's gotten a lot better at that, and that's why you see him first sub off the bench. I guess there was a technical foul called. Oh, and they're switching their shooter for Wingfield. Yeah, I think Pharrell took the one free throw that he needed for a shot, and then Wingfield took, takes the technical free throw. Oh, I see. And Wait. now Pharrell's taking a second free throw. Huh, I, well, you, you see something new every day, Quaz. I, I can't say I've ever seen this in a basketball game. Yeah, referees never signal for a technical foul, but. Yes, and now the ref's talking to the St. Mary's Reagan coach. And the foul shot is good. Second foul shot is good, both swishes. Uh, so I guess those were the two free throws Pharrell had yeah. from his foul, but I'm not sure what the first two were. Yeah, I have no idea what I just saw. Maybe you folks at home know, but I've never seen that before. Joe Green with the ball. Gives it up to Wingfield, out to Pharrell. There again, that player Pharrell screen action. drives to the basket. The layup is no good, oh, and they tap it back in for the basket. Gills are pressing, Reichen with the ball, shot fake to the basket. Oh, number 11 with the paint bucket. Yeah, Holmes was stopping the pass, but forgot to be in front of, in between his defender and the basket, oh. just a simple spin and a layup. St. Mary's Reichen was in a 1-2-2 two, two press. Oh. And the ref calls a travel on Pharrell. It's going the other way, Knights ball. Inbound to Noah Rogers for the Knights with the ball up the court. Drives, throws up the high floater, no good. Gale's ball is the call. Yeah, maybe a little miscommunication on that double handoff there. For Ellie able to get in front of it though at the last second. Yes. Knights in a 1-2-2 two, two press. Oh, Green needs help. Passes to Pharrell. Pharrell up to Wingfield. You see that takes a lot of time Joe off Green the shot with the clock. ball, drives the basket, dish to Holmes, foul. But the shot is no good. Holmes will go to the line for two. Yeah, usually the Gales are really quick in the half court, they get their shots up within 10, 15 seconds, but they're, because of the press, they're up the court in 10 seconds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really slowing them down. 
Yeah, a lot of teams are afraid to press the gales. They have so many talented ball handlers and passers, and then guys who can just dunk at the other end. But not St. Mary's Reichen, and, and the press so far has worked. One shot for Holmes, and it's good. Robert Howard passes to uh, Isaiah Carpenter. Carpenter with the ball. Passes to the paint. Foul on Ranson. The Knights will get the ball under the basket. I'm wondering if the Knights are going to take advantage of that matchup against Ranson in the post. Yes. She's got a significant size disadvantage. Oh. Yeah, they're calling for him the post right there. Yes. On Ranson. Oh. Ranson, good defense. That's a reminder to the kids at home. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight. It's about the size of the fight and the dog. And Ranson has some fight. Nice with the ball. Has to put up a shot. The three hits the rim, but no good. Ooh, that looked like St. Mary's Reichen ball, but it's going the Gales way. Yeah, that did look like it tipped off of Joe Green's hand, but we'll take it. Yes. Joe Green with the ball. Oh, no look pass. Oh, and turnover for Joe Green. Knights pushing it up court. The layup is blocked for three, and it's good. Nothing but net. All right, 12 seconds left in half in the quarter. Tyon Farrell. Ranson sitting in the corner. The ball. Joe Green for three. Oh. And the shot is no good. And the first quarter comes to a close. Score, Mount St. Joe 40, St. Mary's Reichen 10. Start of the second quarter. Joe Green with the ball. Passes to Wingfield. Farrell on the block. Oh! They called a, they called a blocking foul on St. Mary's Reichen. That is definitely something the coach wants them to do. As soon as you get Farrell in the post and you have the size mismatch, wait for him to lower his shoulder and then go to the ground. Yes, Farrell, an absolute horse in the paint. Someone that all teams, if he gets the ball in the paint, then it, uh, bad things can happen for the other team. Yeah, but I think Isaiah Carpenter has done a pretty good job thus far, both in the paint and on the perimeter. Yeah, she's, she's been a big part of the team's success. Oh, and it looks like St. Mary's Reagan is drying off the floor with their shoes. You love to see it, you love to see good sportsmanship. Yeah. Good stuff. Demonstrating Severian values. Uh huh. Yep. Burrell. Yep. Shooting one, and it's good. Am 
Maurice with Eli Conkler brought up the ball. Oh, and another three for number 11. Yeah, that was what they called their West Virginia action, their run for high. I didn't get to see it in the Pilates game because. Uh, oh, and for the Gales, number 11, Elijah Hall subbed in for Dion Wingfield. Uh, Quaz, what are your thoughts on Elijah, a player who's getting more minutes every year? Well, what do you think about him? Yeah, just coming off an injury, he got hurt, I think, before school ended in the summer, and then got hurt again in the fall. But I think he's a really big piece to this team, both his quickness, his pressure defensively, and his ability to create offensively. Really only saw glimpses of it last year towards the end of the game, so he was just pulling stuff and making it. And of course, he's going to have a much bigger role on this team. Yes, totally agree. Burrell bringing the ball up the court. As I was saying, uh, the Knights are in that post action again. I didn't get to see it because against Pilate, they turned the ball over every time they tried to run it. Yes. Joe Green passes to Hall. Hall to Ranson. On the wing, pulls the deep three. Off the rim, no good. Reichen with the rebound. Pass it to the paint. Fadeaway jumper is good. Braylon, no, Corey Hugley. There are two number 11s on the roster, so if that's not the right one, then I'm sorry. But he, he. Yeah, uh, yeah he's been playing great. Yeah. Oh. And St. Mary's Riken turns it over. Foul against St. Mary's Riken. Joe Green goes down. Foul on Noah Rogers. Oh, and Ryan Truitt is in for BJ Ranson. Gales get it out of bounds. St. Mary's Riken is not pressing like they did on the first quarter as much. What do you think about that clause? Yeah, I don't know. First quarter, maybe just get them settled in that one, two, two, maybe say, okay. Show them that you're going to press them and say, We're going to, we want to play a slow game. And then maybe in the second quarter, switch back to man, switch it up a little bit, maybe say, Okay, now we're going to play man because we feel confident on defense. So now Zika Tolu checks in for Joe Green. Coach Clatchy, a lot of positive things to say about him. Sounds like a freak athlete. 40 inch vertical leap or something like that. And being yeah, a freshman crazy. on varsity is, uh, it, it's a huge honor. Yeah, there are a lot of talented freshmen last year that I played with on JV. And I mean, none of them got the nod to go to varsity and they were yes. all very good. Yes, and there are two on this MSJ varsity roster. Very bright futures out of them. And Mihalo uh, Bochirnovic yeah. with the bucket. Truett bringing up the ball. Well done. Passes to Farrell. Farrell surveying the floor. Passes to Holmes, top of the key. Gives it to Truett. Truett dribbling around. Farrell fires up the mid range. No good. Passes up the floor. Layup is no good, Pharrell with the rebound. Pharrell drives it himself, and foul! Is that an and one? Oh my goodness. Talk about a layup. Kids at home, that's why you eat your vegetables and drink your protein shakes, so you can make those layups, man. That, 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 that takes some muscle. Looks like he might have shot that ball three or four times while in the air. Yes, oh Tapped it goodness. up, put it away. Oh. Kenneth Andrews, the other freshman, comes in for, I mean, I mean, sorry, Kenneth Anthony <laughs> comes in for Brandon Holmes. Maurice White bringing the ball up for St. Mary's Riken. Mid-range shot, no good. Zikom with the rebound. 
Passes to Pharrell. Pharrell bringing the ball up the court. Oh, takes it himself to the basket and foul is called. Pharrell sent to the line again for two shots. Now this is a familiar sight, Pharrell at the foul line. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, he's foul line's pretty much his home. Mm -hmm. Pharrell with two shots. And the first shot is good. Subs for St. Mary's Reichen. And the second shot falls too. Noah Rogers bringing the ball up for St. Mary's Reichen. Oh, almost lost it. Truett with great pressure defense. Truett and Hall switch. Oh, and Truett with the steal. Now fast break. Passes to Sakalm. Oh, and it's caught by the St. Mary's Reichen. Oh, turnover again. Lamy and one. What a lay by Ryan Truett. He'll go the line for one shot. Dangerous pass through a lollipop pass. Yes. In their own half court. When Ryan Truett's in the area, you do not want to throw that. Yes, Ryan Truett, make no mistake. He may look thin, but he is very strong and very athletic. And the shot is good. St. Mary's Reichen bringing the ball up the court. Passes through the corner. Oh, foul called. I actually kind of like that play. They sent the ball to the corner and then sent two straight basket cuts around the curl screens. Yes. St. Mary's Reichen under the basket. Passes it to 23. Pass it to Noah Jones, Rogers. Rogers drives, floater, no good. Rebound Opp by Kenneth Anthony. Opposite foot floater, it's a really tough shot, especially over a big defender. Yes, NSJ, they have a lot of size this year. Zacomb hesitates, does not shoot the wide open three. Kenneth Andrews wants the ball in the paint, clearly giving signs, but he's not getting it right now. Yeah, just Truett straight. With the ball. Straight four out, one in right now. Oh, Pharrell, deep three, no good. St. Mary's Reichen with the rebound. Passes up the floor, kicks out to the three-point line. St. Mary's Reichen gets settled. Foul on the floor. It looks like against 35. Hold on, uh, Kenneth Anthony. So Mary's Reichen under the basket. Passes out to Derek Robinson. Double cross, in for the lay. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. Good lay. Winfield with the ball, bringing up the floor. Passes back. to Pharrell. Knights back in their press. Truett trying to get things settled and slow things down. Kenneth, Kenneth Anthony wants the ball. There's some shoving going on down there. Wingfield with a deep three. No. Sikolton with the ball. Oh, and a member of St. Mary's Reichen is injured. Derek Robinson is on the floor. Yeah, Con versus Andrews is going to be a matchup. We're going to have to. Con versus Anthony, sorry. Yeah. It's going to be a matchup we're going to have to watch in the post, both offensively and defensively on both sides of the floor. As we'll cut to break with a Knights player on the floor, Gales leading 23 to 19 with 2.25 to go.
And we are back. St. Mary's Riken with, oh no, sorry. Your MSJ Gales with the ball out of bounds. Truitt is the inbounder. Wingfield in the game. Pass out to Zacombe. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Burrell surveying the floor, decides to drive, dish to Zacombe for the easy layup. And that's beautiful basketball right there, Quaz. You love to see it. Yeah, two, two defenders, little uh, underhand pass, and he, that's an easy layup. Nice. St. Mary's Reagan drives and foul on Zacombe. Zacombe clearly not a fan of the call. That Gales with three subs after this free throw. Brandon Holmes, Torian Thompson, Joe Green checking back in. Torian, first minutes of this one. Seen a lot of him towards the second half, third and fourth quarters. So far this season, looks like he's getting his first minutes in the first half in this tight one. Gale's only up six. Andrews, Decombe, and Truitt go out. One shot. And no good, Holmes with the rebound. Passes it to Green. Green surveying the floor. Out to Farrell. Oh, and Farrell diving on the floor. Oh, you love to see it. Jump ball and it's St. Mary Riken ball. Oh, looks like they have to tie their shoes. And the sub is in. I would also like to mention, starting at the same time as, I guess, 30 minutes before, we're sorry, the St. Mary's fresh soft team did show up a little bit late, so the fresh soft game then starts at 4.30, which put all three of these games behind schedule. St. Francis and St. Maria Garetti playing against each other here at 7 o'clock. I believe that one's at Garetti. One of the biggest games of the year, and it's the first day of MIAA conference play. Yes, big matchup. We'll be waiting to see the results from that one. Oh, and blocked by Holmes and Green. Green with the rebound. Fast break, Pharrell to the paint. Wingfield, three corner, nothing but net. Oh my goodness, that's a beautiful jump shot, ladies and gentlemen. If Wingfield gets the ball open for three near the defense, you might as well turn around and start walking back to the other side of the court, because chances are it's going down. Yeah, one of the best shooters on this team, really a spark. Yes, I'd say even one of the best shooters in the MIAA. Oh, nice turnaround jumper. Burrell bringing the ball up the court. St. Mary's in a 1-2-2 press. Passes to Torian. Joe Green with the mid-range bucket. No good. St. Mary's right, it has the ball. 30 seconds left in the half. Oh, dive on the floor. Jump ball, it's scrappy. And it's going the Gale's way. Oh, timeout by the Gales. We'll be right back. And we are back. MSJ gets the ball. 26 seconds left in the first half. Inbounds to Joe Green. I had to imagine Coach Clatchy drew up some play. 
Joe Green taking his time, allowing things to set up. Drives to the basket. Not quite. Fouls called. Two shots for Brandon Holmes. That was really great defense by the Knights in the half court. Rogers took the gap on the foot on the curl screen, sorry, for Wingfield. And a great job by the other defender in the corner, just trailing hip. Now it didn't catch the ball there. Pass the three-point line. Down his first shot. <laughs> Open sub for St. Mary's Riken. And Ranson comes in for Farrell. Give him a quick break. Going into the half. And both shots are good for Holmes. Five seconds left. St. Mary's Riken. Fade away, one foot, no good. Blocked. And it's halftime. Your score, Gales 30, Knights 21. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back for the second half of basketball. St. Joe up 30 to 21 against St. Mary's Riken. St. Joe will get the ball. The Gales are uh, rolling with their starters to start the second half. Green is the point guard bringing out the ball. Lots of off ball screens happening for the Gales. Pass to Pharrell, Pharrell mid-range jumper, in and out, no good. Reichen with the rebound. St. Mary's Reichen getting settled. Knights with our 1-4 high post action. Thus far, looks like number two is gonna cut to the block. See if they can get him against Joe Green. Oh. And Matthew Herbert, uh, someone who's been hitting a lot of threes, number 11 for St. Mary's Reichen, not hitting there. Definitely someone that the Gales need to watch for this second half. Reichen with it, wide open corner three, and it's good. Miscommunication on a double handoff right there. Both of the Gales defenders took the ball handler. Got the three point shooter wide open. Yes. I know that Clatchy is not happy right now. He, that is not what he teaches. Joe Green settling, waiting for something to happen. Passes to Wingfield. Wingfield driving, mid range, no good off the front of the rim. Reichen running with it now. Three ball. Off the rim, no good. Green with the rebound. St. Joe now running it. Wingfield does not shoot the wide open three. In the paint to tie on, and the Gales get their first points of the half. Wingfield tried to take a rhythm dribble, but took too much time for the right and closer to close out to get there. Oh. And it stays St. Mary Reichen ball. St. Mary's Reichen inbounds it to the corner to Robinson. Passes up to six. A legal screen is called against the Knights and it's Gale's ball. Ryan Truitt bringing the ball up the floor. Pass to Farrell, the green. Through right. it now with the ball. Knights back in there, one, two, two. Switch to man now. Wingfield trying to make something happen. Drives behind the back. Pharrell, and it's blocked. Ref calls it Knights ball. St. Mary's right can bring the ball up the floor. Pressure defense from Wingfield. St. Mary's right can drives. Layup. No good. Called a block on the Gales. Derek Robinson will go to the line for two. First shot, no good, off the front of the rim. In season tournament quarterfinal starting tonight. Celtics up 47-46. Two minutes left in the second quarter. Mm. Later tonight, Pelicans and Kings at 10 o'clock. Second shot, nothing but net. St. Mary's Reichen now in a press. A 1-2-2 two, two press. True it with the ball. Reichen tries to trap. But it's unsuccessful. Gales moving it around. Oh, had Wingfield wide open in the corner, but Pharrell did not see him. You'll see on that 1-2-2 two, two press, when the ball is swung to the opposite wings, Pharrell, Wingfield, you'll see that the opposite defender of the Knights comes in the middle and cuts that off. That's where the Gales try to get it, pivot, and attack. Yes. They're doing a great job cutting it off. Not letting oh. him get up before quick. And Pharrell is fouled, and yet again will be sent to the line.
Burrell at the line for two. First shot is good. Kyan Farrell, major part of this team, someone who's worked his way through the program. Uh, yeah, has been here since its freshman year. Uh, what do you think of him? I mean, obviously he's taking a bigger leadership role this year than he was last year with Amani Hansberry, the focal point in the post. I really like the way he's developed this game into a three-level scorer. Last year, all of his points came at the basket. There'd be layups, there'd be free, free throws. This series really developed the pull-up game. You could see his work over the summer and a three-point game, which is helping them stretch the floor and make more space for the shooters. And foul on Ryan Truitt. Noah Rogers will go the line for two for the Knights. Yeah, Noah Rogers is a guy that first time I looked up St. Mary's Reichen Knights basketball, his name popped up because of a scouting site at one of the tournaments. His name was one to pop out and watching that film, he's a really good defender putting pressure on the team's main scorers and he's also really good on offense. Yes, he's been a big part of St. Mary's game plan. And the second shot is good as well. 34-27 Gales. Ty and Farrell pushing the pace. Looking for something, passes to Truitt. Back to Farrell. Good switches by the Knights on all false screens. Yes. Gales looking for something. Joe Green takes it to the basket, kicks it out to Wingfield for three. No good. Burrell with the ball in the corner. A little shimmy move, cut off. Holmes with the layup. St. Mary's Reichen running it now, hoping to get something. It settles in. Oh, shot fake, beautiful shot fake there, but no good. Green with the rebound and looking to run. Passes to the paint to Holmes. Holmes nice. sizing up his man, fade away, switch. Nice dropping base. By Holmes. Nice dropping baseline on the post, but Holmes recognized that and went straight middle. Holmes is a guy who has a lot more confidence than he did last year. And it's now a big Oh my good Oh. Oh no. Pharrell goes down. Teams are sent back to the benches. Oh, and Pharrell gets up. Oh, that's scary for the Gales. Man, if he threw that down, we would have had to send the National Guard in here because this place just, it would have blown up. He, uh, that would have been on ESPN over time. Whatever you want to call it. Oh, and you, and you love to see that. Look, the president of the school sweeping the floor. Oh, that's beautiful. That is the beauty of MSJ right there. The president doing the dirty work. Love to see it. Yep. Pharrell to the line for two. Misses the first shot. And Elijah Hall is in for Ryan Truitt. One shot for Pharrell. And this one is good. Coach calls West Virginia, which is their one four high post action, or no, sorry. This is their dribble handoff, I believe, to a ball screen. Right now. Oh, foul called against Wingfield. And the fans do not like it one bit. Knights had trouble getting to their offense there. And the Knights will get the ball under the basket. Right. Noah Rogers will take it out for the Knights. Hands it off at the top of the key. Screen is set. Three ball, no good off the front of the rim. Oh, beautiful pass to Wingfield up the floor. Joe Green 
with a beautiful assist. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. So that, is the, that is the first time we have seen that the all game. And that's why you keep your head up, kids. That's why you don't stare at the ball. So you can make those beautiful passes and just look good. Oh. And Farrell with the rebound. No foul was called. Out to Wingfield, wide open mid-range. Swish. And St. Joe calls timeout. Goes up 43 to 27. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. And we are back. Anthony in for Holmes. Substitution for the Gales. Gales with their biggest lead of the game so far. 16 points. <laughs> Clatchy tells Kenneth Anthony not to foul. Gales are pressing. Uh, back in their normal full court man. Oh, and the Gales just have suffocating defense. But Reichen finds a way to get through. Oh, beautiful cutoff. Oh, great hustle by Reichen. And number two with the layup. Elijah Hall, the point guard, dribbling the ball up the floor. Passes it to Wingfield. Almost picked off by St. Mary's Reichen. Wingfield, shot fake, drives. Floater is no good. Passes to Noah Jones. Noah Jones out to Robinson. Drives to the basket. No good. 15 with the rebound. Passes out. Fouls call on the floor. On Kenneth and on Kenneth Anthony. And lots of subs coming in for St. Mary's Riken. Right now. All right, yeah, they have their five on the floor. Pass the ball. Drives to the basket. Oh, good move. Mid-range shot, no good. Knights with the rebound, but Wingfield steals it. Transition, passes to Hall. Hesitation, layup is good. That's good basketball by Elijah Hall. I yeah, got Rogers up in the air on the fast break, looking to slam that one in the third row, but yes. great shot fake from him. Patient, he puts it up. Patient, disciplined, all things you look for in a good Hooper. 15 in the post, post up, fades away, no good. Oh, ball is bobbled, but the Knights get it. Kicked out for three, takes the layup, good move. Friday night. Pharrell Norgreen wanted to help there on the weak side, but to a wide open layup. Kick out to Wingfield, and the ball is bobbled and out of bounds. It's Knight's ball. Gales are picking up at half court now. Coach Klatchy again tells Kenneth Andrews not to foul. Oh, ball tipped by Joe Green. The Riken recovers. <coughs> Drives to the basket over Pharrell, no good. And it's called Knight's Ball.
St. Mary's Rake with the ball under the basket. Out to Noah Rogers. Off the backboard is no good. Elijah Hall with the rebound. Reichen pressing. Pass to Joe Green, Wingfield. Corner three, splash! Three ball! That is his bread and butter, across the wide open three. Coach Klatsy up with his three sign. I don't really know what else to call it, but yeah, three sign, I don't yeah, know. The three sign, three fingers, I don't know. Klatsy was hyped after that hit. After no that fouls, shot. oh! Foul called on the Knights. Seven seconds left in the third quarter. What will the Gales run to get a shot? Inbounds to Joe Green, they gotta run. Up to Elijah Hall. Oh, and a foul called. Elijah Hall will go to the line for two. As you can see, the Knights defender, Maurice White, was so worried about Wingfield in the corner that he went out for the pass instead of stopping the ball of yes. Hall, which is what he's supposed to do. Yes, that's what a good shot does, kids at home. It, it changed the way a defense has to play, and that's what Wingfield brings to the table. You have to respect his shot. He was honestly probably right for that, because that was going to go yes. in. Hall makes his first foul shot. One shot with two seconds left in the third quarter. Second shot is good as well. St. Mary's Riken, good if it goes. Air ball. That's the end of the third quarter. Your score, Gales 50, Knights 31. We'll be back after a short break. <coughs> And we are back. Start of the fourth quarter. Gales up 50-31. And the Gales will get the ball to start the quarter. Oh, St. Mary's Riken disagrees that the Gales start off with the ball. Elijah Hall bringing the ball up the court. Tacoma is subbed in for Joe Green. Plainfield fouled. He'll go to the line for two. Coach Clash, he's got so many different ways to get DJ Wingfield open on the perimeter. There, Kenneth Anthony, Tyon Perel matched up on the free throw, not really the free throw line, but like the hash marks, I guess you would call it, for an elevator screen. That gave him some room to, room to create on the perimeter and the drive. Yes. First shot is good. St. Mary's right in subs. Gills have four players back on the other side of the court. Second shot is good. Gills out 52-31. Green is set. Noah Jones passes. And a foul is called on Kenneth Anthony. 
White 35 holding. Yeah, oh, and Holmes is sent in for Anthony. Yeah, that's Anthony's third, so Bocce's gonna take him out. And Ranson also in, in for Wingfield. Samaria's Reichen working the ball around, seeing their options. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Posted up, number 15. Oh, but Holmes does not allow. And Holmes does not like the call, foul called on him. Number 15 will go to the line for two. Fans here don't really like it either. Track coach, Mr. Regan, with some words to say. And the first shot is no good. Now, personally, I don't want to say that the ref is wrong because the ref is always right. Yes. But I thought that Brandon Holmes had his hands straight up, and that was good I defense. Oh, and off the backboard. You don't see that often. Passes it into Zacombe. St. Mary's right and pressing. Oh, almost lost it. They got to get the ball over half court. This is a really good test for the Gales for upcoming MIA competition where teams are going to put a lot of ball pressure on them. Floater. Beautiful floater by Elijah Hall. <laughs> Noah Jones surveying the floor. St. Mary's Reagan passing the ball around, seeing what works. Trying to get the ball inside of the paint, but Brandon Holmes with just great defense. An absolute horse in the paint. Brandon Holmes locking down two people. Beautiful, beautiful defense by the Gales. Also some underrated weak side help by BJ Ranson. Yes. That cut off the pass, cut off the passing angle. Now that's what interior defense looks like, kids at home. Oh, good spin move. Oh, and he's on the ground. Eye on Pharrell, pass out to Ranson, wide open, corner three, no good. And it's called Knight's Ball. Noah Rogers bring the ball up the court. Oh, and it looks like the Knights are gonna send in four subs, change it up a little bit. Ranson guarding Rogers. Number 15 has the ball against Holmes. Tries to get into the paint, unsuccessful. Running out of time, mid-range shot, no good. Zacombe with the rebound. Elijah Hall with the ball. Hey, that rhymes. Fighting off, man. Zacombe. Tries to take it to the basket. Brandon Holmes, wide open, mid-range, air ball. Oh, beautiful rebound by Ranson. Yet again, showing us. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight. It's about the size of the fight in the dog. That's B.J. Ranson right there. Gales get it out of bounds. And Torian Thompson is in for Elijah Hall. He will take the ball out of bounds for the Gales. Ball's kicked out to Ranson. Ranson had Holmes in the paint wide open, but did not see him. Pharrell drives to the basket, left-handed layup, and one. Man. It's almost like the foul line is this guy's second home. Not really much you can do, a straight line drive given up by the Knights to Pharrell. There's no weak side help, nothing much you can do other than foul him. That's beautiful basketball by the Gales. And the foul shot is good. Gales up 57-32 with 5.30 left in the game. Thompson guarding number one. Pass is stolen by Ranson. Ranson looks to pass forward. Ty and Pharrell slows it down. Zacombe, wide open. Oh, but Pharrell did not see him. <coughs> oh, it looked like that was tipped by Ranson, but it still went in. 
Farrell bringing the ball up, passes to Ranson. Five seconds left to get the ball to court. Thompson fires up a three, no good. Air ball. Almost stolen. Almost sent into the stands. Yeah, Thompson, one of the better shooters last year on JV, just kind of coming in cold, unfortunate. <laughs> At the one, well, first shot he gets is, is an air ball. I mean, he, I mean, it's his first year on varsity. He'll learn, he's a sophomore on varsity. Future's bright for this young man. Riken out of bounds on the side. Pass it to Noah Rogers. Out to number 10. Noah Rogers at number 25. And a jump ball is called blue ball. Riken with the ball under the basket. Pass out to number 10 in the corner. Oh, and the ball's turned over. Farrell looking to kick it. Ranson, wide open layup is good. And again, beautiful display of basketball by the Gales. Oh, foul called against Ranson. Reached a little bit too much on there and help did BJ. Oh, and senior, A.J. Norman, subs in for Tyon Farrell. Farrell gets a standing ovation. Great performance for him in this game. He gets some much deserved rest. Three ball, St. Mary's Reichen does not fall. R Ransom with the rebound, passes to Holmes. Norman bringing the ball up the floor. Thompson will settle things. McComb working, surveying the floor. Passes back to Thompson. Ranson, three ball is good, nothing but net. Beautiful shot by Ranson. Three for number one, air ball. That was not supposed to happen. Thompson pushing the ball, passes to Ranson. Out to Zacomb for three. In and out, but no good. Pace picking up here as this game comes to an end. 62-34 is your score with a little over three minutes left in the game. The ball is blocked. Owen Zacomb with the ball. Running in transition, one-on-one. -on -one. Shots no good. Holmes with the putback, misses. A wide open layup, and he is frustrated. Holmes after missing that layup attempt gets subbed out. Right in there, another sophomore who made varsity from JV last year checking in. We talked a lot about him, played really well against St. Paul's in the waiting minutes of that game. Joaquin Aguiman also checking in for the Gale Street's final three minutes. Gale is passing the ball around, seeing what's open. Norman drives to the basket. Layup is no good, but a foul is called. Norman will go to the line for two. First shot for Norman is no good. During these free throws, we'll just check up on these last few games the Gales played after our last broadcast. Last Thursday, they beat Severn at Severn, 64 to 57 then. They took on two schools in the Annapolis area Christian tournament over the weekend, beating Atlanta Shore, Atlantic Shores from Virginia, 70 to 27, and then Annapolis area Christian, 86 to 67, to take that tournament, tournament championship. Oh, and the ball is thrown out of bounds. at St. Mary's breaking, and it's Gales ball. The Knights are pressing. Thompson receives the inbound. Norman with the ball. 
step back, and it's good. Beautiful step back from Norman. That looked like a walk, but it was called a foul. Also just updating on St. Mary's Reichen, who also played in the tournament over the weekend, the Sleepy Thompson Tournament, beating Trinity Episcopus, Episcopal School from Virginia 61 to 50, then losing to St. Stephen's and St. Agnes, the team that the Gales played last year and beat by two on a buzzer beater. They lost 79 to 46. And then in their last game against Clinton Grace Christian School, winning 55 to 52 on a buzzer beater in the third place game. First shot is good. And the second shot falls as well. Kenneth Andrews subs in for Ranson. The Knights still pressing. Thompson brings the ball to the floor. Norman in the corner. Out to Andrews. Andrews looking for an option. Joaquin in the corner. AJ Norman. Oh, step back three. Ah, oh, no good. Fancy moves, but the shot could not fall. Balls on the wing, number 10. Looking to create. Passes to number seven. And the paint to number 15 with the mismatch. And the layup is no good. Gales with the rebound. Thompson surveys the floor, finds Norman. Norman to Barrett. Barrett drives, and, is, and he will go to the line for two. Good job by Barrett, who's really improved his jump shot. I talked about that a lot. That's a really big part of his game. It's just attacking the big. I was guarding him, drawing the foul. And he knocks down the first shot. Both shots are good for Barrett. A little over a minute left and the Gales are up by 30. Gales now moving into a 2-3, which we usually see them do towards the end of the games. Maybe Clatchy wants to try something else, mix it up, see how the team looks in a 2-3. 10 for three, no good. And Joaquin is unable to save. Coach Clatchy did not like that he tried to save it. Yeah, as I told Coach Shank during the JV game when a kid on St. Mary's threw it right under the basket and gave Kamari a wide open layup, the coaches always say, I'd rather you throw the ball out of bounds than throw it right under the basket. Yes. You hear that, kids at home? Remember those words. Kicks it out to number seven. Seven with the mid-ranger off the rim, no good. The Knights have been struggling offensively this half. Kenneth Andrews in the post. Passes into traffic and it's knocked out of bounds. Gale's ball under the basket. 17 seconds left in the game. It's As likely the Gales will just dribble this out. As we wind this one down, Gales back in action on Wednesday at Loyola for their first MIA conference game. And then our next broadcast will be Friday right here at the Smith Center against Calvert Hall. Be sure to check that out on our MSJ TV YouTube channel. First MIA A conference game here at the Smith Center. And the Gales will just hold this one. Oh, are they gonna try something? Barrett shoots it. That's a little disrespectful when you're up by 30. I don't think the coaching staff would love that, but that's yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. One thing, one thing I always say is 
these are some of the last minutes of the game, and these are his only minutes of the game. So yeah, why yeah. just make them dribble it out when they don't really get that, that much uh, action? That is that is true. First shot off the front of the rim and good. Second shot falls as well. Six seconds left in the game. St. Mary's Riken. Looks like they'll just dribble it out. And that's it. Your final score, Gales 68, Knights 36. The Gales moved to 6-0, undefeated in MIA play, and undefeated at home. Quaz, what did you think of the game? Yeah, I mean, I thought the Gales really did a great job making adjustments. Obviously, St. Mary's came out in the first half with a lot of ball pressure, a lot of transition game, which the Gales have not seen thus far, and kind of beating them at their own game. I really love the adjustments Coach Kachi made into the second half, just suddenly it down, getting their half-court offense better, and kind of playing St. Mary's. We're just hearing from Mr. Lewis that it's Coach Kachi's 800th win as the head coach of MSJ. Congrats to him. Built this program from the ground up. Now that is something. 800, that, that's a lot of anything. Wow, Coach Clatchy, the man, the myth, the legend. As President Mr. George Andrews delivers him a basketball to honor this record. That's a legend right there, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Platt Kalachi. To reach 800 career victories. And that's Coach is the second winningest private school coach all time in the state of Maryland behind only legendary Matthew Coach Morgan Wooten who has 1,274 victories over 46 seasons. And the second place all time is Coach Butch Waller from Wacomico with 902 career victories. He starts his 58th season as an active coach. As we wrap this game up here at the Smith Center, Coach Kalachi, 800 wins. We thank you guys so much for watching. As I said, we'll be back on Friday night as the Gales take on the Cower Hall Cardinals. My name's Alex Kloss. And my name's Mason Billings. Thank, thank you guys for tuning in. Good night.